Hey guys, some of you who are moving from Unity to Unreal Engine might be wondering if there's a similar functionality to coroutines found in Unreal Engine. And there is a thing called latent accents and I've decided to go through them on this video because I really couldn't find too much stuff about them. So without further ado, let's start out. What I'm gonna start out with is just creating a new C++ class and we're gonna be inheriting from the player controller. Uh, this class is just going to be our functionality to start the latent accents and see how they work. I'm just going to call it my player controller. The name doesn't really matter in this example. We are also going to be creating a header file for our latent accents. There we go. Open up the IDE. And there we go. So here's our player controller. We are gonna, however, start with the creating the latent accents. So I'm just gonna create a header file for them. Uh, they're only gonna have, for our example at least, is gonna have a pretty simple functionality. So I'm just gonna add a file and call it uh, my latent accents dot h. Start out with the pragma ones. And for, for the latent access, we actually want to include a header file called latent access dot h. And instead of creating just a sing, simul, uh, single function, like you do in Unity, like an I enumerator for the coroutine, you need to create a class for, for your accents. So we're going to create a class called timer latent accent. And we're going to be inheriting from f pending latent accent that is found in the header file we included. Uh, what we're going to use in this example is to just have a simple simple timer running for like five seconds and then stop running. See how, how that actually functions. What we're gonna want to do is to uh, override a function called update operation. This is gonna be the function that's gonna be running every single frame when, once we start the latent action. I'm also gonna take some member variables here. So I'm gonna take an ID. This is not necessary by any means, but we're gonna use it to uh, make sure that our text, we're gonna print out the text of the timer on the screen. That's gonna show probably. We're also gonna be um, taking the duration of this latent action. So for example, five seconds. Uh, we also want the reference to delta time so we can increase our timer consistently and also we're gonna have a member for our current race and what, what is gonna start from zero obviously. Uh, let's create a constructor for this one so timer related action and take in ID max duration and delta time as the parameters so ID max duration as float and the delta time we want to send as a reference. And let's initialize our members. So ID becomes ID, max duration becomes max duration. Delta time becomes delta time and our uh, current duration is gonna start out from zero, obviously. We're also gonna include the body here, which is gonna be empty. So this is going to be running every frame. So we're going to be wanting to increase our current duration by the delta time. There. And to show text on, on our screen easily, we can use a add on screen deb debug message. And we're going to be passing our first parameter is going to be the ID we're going to pass in. The second parameter is going to be how long 
message is going to be shown. I'm going to pass in delta time. This is going to make sure that we have our timer running properly on the screen. The next one is going to be color. I'm going to uh, pass in green, I guess. After that, we're going to have our message, which I'm going to put as uh, our current duration. We're going to pass in true on the new or top parameter and I want to be scaling our text a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to double it in size so you guys can see it easier. So now if we, if we don't add anything else in here, this, this update operation function is going to run every single frame after it has been started and will never stop. If we want to stop it, we're going to use a done if conditional from the res response object. And well, obviously for this one, we want to stop this latent action once the duration is equals or greater than the max duration we set in. So if we set in five as max duration, this latent action is going to stop running after five seconds. So to keep it simple and basic, this is pretty much all we are going to do with this one. Save it up and go back to our player controller header. What we want to do here is uh, we want to, first of all, we want to set up our key to start our latent action. So I'm going to be overriding the setup input component. And we also want a function for uh, starting the latent action. So I'm just going to call it start timer latent action. I'm going to implement the definitions in the CPP file. And let's set up our input component first. Remember to call the super to the base base function. And we're just gonna, for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna uh, add a key. So when we press enter, let's say enter. We want to be starting our start late, uh, running our start time and latent action function. So whenever we press it, the object is going to be this. We're going to be running the function from this this uh, object, and the function is going to be start later timer latent action. That should be it for this function. And for this function, we're just going to be randomizing ourselves an ID for the sake of this example. So I'm just going to randomize a number between zero and like, let's say, I don't know, one million. And to add a latent action or start a latent action, we can just call or uh, get a reference to our world. And you should have a get latent action manager reference in here where you can just simply add a new action. We're going to be adding, this is going to be the object that's adding it. ID, we're going to pass in the ID variable. And then the last one is what latent action we're going to be wanting to run. Obviously, we have to include the header over here. so. Let's in include our my latent axis. And then we're just going to create a new object of the timer latent action. And it's going to be wanting three parameters for constructor. So the ID, the max duration, which is going to be how long we want it to run, and then a reference to the delta time. So first one is ID. The next one is going to be five. I'm going to, I want, want it to run for five seconds. And the last one is going to be a reference to Delta time, which you can also find from, 
from your world object. Okay, this is just bouncing all around, so I'm gonna put this into two lines. So get world delta time seconds for the last last parameter. Uh, for this functionality, the bind key functions work. You need to go to your latent or your project name .build.cs file and have this line added. It might be commented for you, but make sure this one is uncommented. Or if you don't have it under comments, you just need to add it manually. Otherwise, you will get a build error. So this should be it. We save everything. We go back to Unreal Engine. We compile. It's gonna take a while. And then we hit play. And now every time I hit enter, we should be seeing a green timer on the top left. And we're not seeing green text because I forgot to create a new game mode to set our player controller. So we need to go to project settings, maps and modes, and we need to change our game mode. For this example, I'm just gonna create a new one here, a new blueprint with the name be new game mode, whatever. And we're gonna be have, wanting to change our player controller class to the my player controller we just created. And now, when we go back, hit play, I press enter, and you're gonna be seeing a timer. And the timer is gonna be running for five seconds and then stopping. And you can have as many of these as you want. They will be running asynchronously with your game. So, very much like a core routine behavior from Unity. I think I'll leave this video here. Keep it simple. Uh, I hope this is going to help someone, at least a little bit. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.